Okay, welcome. Welcome to Distance Learning with Common Sense. My name is Jennifer Ehalt. I'm the Senior Regional Manager for Common Sense Education. And today we are going to get talking about um, some creative ways to understand student art. And so I am really excited today to introduce you to our two guests, Sherry and Jane. James. Jerry Sturman is the Director of Education at Crayola, and James Wells is the Innovative Teaching and Learning Manager, and we are thrilled to have you with us today. You have no idea how much I've been looking forward to this, this um, session. So uh, without further ado, Sherry, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, Crayola, the mission, and what you're here to share with us today. Sure, sure. So I've had the pleasure of working with Crayola for the past uh, 30 plus years, the most colorful place on earth. And we're really excited that as part of our mission of raising creatively alive children uh, and, and working with parents and educator um, in that, that awesome responsibility, we are now providing professional development for educators and helping them bring more creative uh, teaching and learning experiences to our field. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. And James, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Uh, my name is James Wells. And as we mentioned, I uh, work for Crayola. I've been a part of Crayola for a little over three years now. I come to uh, this company with a you know, past experience uh, in the arts as both an educator, middle school, high school, as well as a uh, district art, arts administrator. So uh, in the spirit of uh, Crayola's mission of raising creatively alive children, I was uh, a child then, and uh, and I love that I have the opportunity to carry that spirit of uh, creativity that children uh, just have uh, on a day in and day out basis in, in what I do each and every day uh, in working with educators uh, across this country. So thank you for having us today, Jim. Oh, we are excited and we cannot wait to learn from you. So we, uh, Sherry James, you both use the term creativity, create. Can you tell me a little more about the definition when we think about creativity? Yeah. So everybody seems to have their favorite definition of creativity. And the main point that, that we like to make is it's not just about art, right? Like obviously artists are creative, but um, sometimes if people don't have a lot of creative confidence, we really let on your back and say, what do you think you know, creativity means? It doesn't mean you're a Picasso, you could be a creative problem solver in the way you're teaching and, and approaching your life. So I personally have this as my favorite definition. Creativity is the ability to see what's not there and create something new because it, it emphasizes that creativity is an observation skill, right? It's about seeing, observing, inquiry, very similar to what we're going to talk about today when we break down the seek, seek insights um, from art. Awesome. Thank you. And so James, I'm going to turn it to you now for a second. And I want to think sure. about um, hands-on projects. You know, when we create, obviously, when you the definition, I'm thinking marker, crayon, paper, right? It's hands-on. But how do you take that further? And even especially now that kids are remote and hybrid, like students are, you know, creating and being creative in different spaces. So tell us a little more about that. Exactly. Yes. So um, when we think about hands-on learning, you know, one of the, the sayings we have at Crayola, one of our mantras is make thinking visible. And there's something magical about that, particularly in um, uh, a remote environment as we all uh, most at least are in, you know, as a parent, my kids are in a remote learning environment. And one of the things that I would encourage educators to do uh, in support of this process is leverage making thinking visible and why do we say hands on making thinking visible is uh, you know you see this little piece here student engagement right student engagement we know that when students are engaged they uh, active listeners um, actively engaged they're not passive rights you know one of the things that you know, I would say and encourage educators to do particularly in a remote environment is give students the opportunity to make their thinking visible. And this can be through sketching, for example. Sketching is a form of communication. Uh, you know, sitting behind the computer screen uh, can be information. But as the educator tapping into your creativity, 
right? Uh, you know, Sherry said, you know, the ability to, to see what's not there. Um, you know, you're not there in the room. So how can we leverage our creativity, our creative minds to engage students? So, you know, it can be something as a simple sketch, right? So that helps with hands-on learning, helps with student engagement. You know, another thing that I want to add to that is uh, metacognition, right? That's a benefit, right? Students are thinking about their thinking and their work, right? And we want to encourage that because that's a very important process. As educators, we want to teach students not to regurgitate information. We want to teach them to think, right? That's uh, the essence of education. And by, you know, putting it in their hands, it allows for them, again, to make their thinking visible and show you what they know. And, you know, as a former educator, I want kids to show me what they know, and they can do that through something as simple as uh, pencil to paper, right? But we have to give them the space uh, to do that. I agree. And I agree too that as we talk through all of these tools and ideas today, keeping in mind this is all K-12, pre-K-12, right? All of this can be, you know, move up or down the grade levels um, as adults, right? I think now more than ever, we're all sketching and doodling and... <laughs> Finding just think clearly because we're all multitasking. So I really like that idea. So we want to think about how teachers can use student art as a window, right, out into what our kids are feeling. And so I know you guys are going to share with us today a tool called Seek and how it helps, you know, find insights from student work. So let's get <laughs> to the good stuff. So Seek, what, what do we need to know about Seek before we get started? So um, it's really about seeking insights from any visual. Could be students' work, could be fine art, could be picture book illustrations, lots of ways to use seek. So Jennifer, I don't know if you want to hold up the pieces or if you want me to, you, you decide. There you go. The first one, <laughs> right? you the first S is C. So it's, it's a simple question. Um, observation. What do you you see. Usually this might be some sort of a headline. We're going to, uh, Jennifer's going to share her screen in a little bit and show you uh, two pieces of art. And when we ask the question, what do you see? Give us sort of a headline for that image. The next, evidence. So you gave us a headline. Now tell us, why did you say that? Cite your evidence. And we know this isn't the standards. This is a super important foundation for, for learning. And the next E, explain. So here's where you're building on the inference and the explanation skills. Think about the decisions that the artist made to convey meaning. And then my favorite part, the K. So it's know. What do you know? And what do you want to know? So this is all about inquiry, keeping kids super curious. So let's use it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are going to look at our first piece of art. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, great. Hold a second, okay. There, thank you. So um, I'm gonna ask everyone and please type this in the chat. This will be wonderful to see your thoughts in chat. Tell us first, what do you see? Give us a headline for this piece. And let's see what we've got in chat. Give us a headline. You see sadness. sadness. You see yeah. the detail of the face mask, right? Yeah, you see fear, sadness, a child crying. Cite your evidence. You see the pandemic, right? So when you're citing your evidence, describe the image. You're seeing a barren landscape. You're seeing trapped in a bubble. Absolutely, seeing isolation, people floating in these bubbles that aren't touching, trapped, oh, waving goodbye, interesting, absolutely. So um, now that you've sended your evidence, now we would like you to, to explain. Explain the artist's intention. Think about some of these techniques that were used. You might uh, think about the color scheme or what is the emphasis. Uh, what do you think that headline? Explain the, the, the intent of the young artist to put those words on the top. Right. Th what decisions did that artist make? Mm -hmm. Let's hear some of your thoughts. 
the pandemic is very isolating for children, really intentionally showed that isolation and nothing does it better than those bubbles. The colors are calm, they're uneasy, there's a darkness, there's maybe one little ray of sunlight on that barren landscape, but not much. Oh, so you're thinking that uh, uh, creating empathy, that these colors and images were to, to build a sense of, of, of empathy. You see the brush strokes that are strong, that show a depth of feeling. Absolutely. Did anyone comment on that, on that yeah. tear tunking under yes. the mask? Yes, yep. Siri, I wanted to come in on that. You know, the, the black and white, and then you have the, the contrast of the, the, the tear coming down right. the child's the face. The only color right. in the face is that mm -hmm. saltwater tear. Right, absolutely. And then my favorite part, what do we know and what do we want to know? Now we know the artist's name, Alicia. And what I want to know is, did this student artist write about this? Is the student keeping a journal of the thoughts and feelings of the day? Is the, the student uh, recording the stories, collecting and gathering stories of how people's lives today are so impacted by the pandemic? What else do you want to know? Oh, is it biographical? Said they, that they want to know if the child was actually personally touched by COVID, um, either as an individual or a family member, you know, how, how the disease impacted them individually, right? Is the child sick? How are they suffering? Absolutely. So I think you can see just in those very few moments uh, through our chat, we were able to get such depth from this image. Incredible, incredible. And thank you to everyone who's participating because I love seeing all the different perspectives. This is not the first time I saw this particular you know, ch child's piece of art, but wow, it brought a different perspective for me too, because I saw something different. And it doesn't mean it's right or wrong, right? It just is bringing in, you know, different ideas. So I love it. Thank you. And so, um, James, did you want to add something? Yeah, I, I, I do, Jennifer. You know, and this is, uh, I, this touches on what we just discussed around making thinking visible. Right. You know, you're looking at a work of art that was created by a student. And, you know, one of the you know, additional benefits is student voice. Our kids have something to say. And it's important for us as educators to give them the platform to express themselves. So this is you know, a great classic piece of artistic expression. But also this student is leaning into something that's connecting and impacting us all. Right. We all are a part of the pandemic. Right. And we're all bringing our experiences to this piece. We're all in this bubble in some way, shape or form. Right. Uh, you know, maybe we're floating outside of the, the boundaries of this piece. And this student, uh, you know, and, and the teacher that, that provided the platform for this to happen uh, is it, so important for us, you know, again, to, to consider this. And, and one last bit as well. You know, we live in a culture where everything's visual. Right. Ninety percent of the information we take in is visual. So. Again, it's so important for us to, to create opportunities for students to make their thinking visible. And this, this is you know, a classic example of, of that at work. Awesome, I couldn't agree more. I love how you framed that for us. Okay, we're gonna keep moving because I wanna make sure that we get um, time for the other uh, piece of art. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, this one's really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, see, as much yeah. as that piece was so timely and relevant, so this is too, but with some evergreen elements. Yes. So let me go ahead and we're going to continue the same tool. So we're going to go to Aaron's art. Sorry, I love continue. what Carla said, listening when they're not always words. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. And this piece is filled with words, so you're going to have yes, a real challenge with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, can you see my screen? It's loading. Okay, perfect. Okay, James, I think you're going to walk us through this. Absolutely. So again, we have a, a great timely piece here, as Sherry mentioned, Evergreen. So using the SEEK protocol, I want to encourage those in the viewing and listening audience to take a look here. Let's start with what do you see uh, in looking at this piece? Oh, gosh, I see a child breaking free, breaking free. Yes. Uh, liberty. 
freedom. Yes. You know, these are our great words. Exactly. So breaking free. So we have that now. Let's move quickly to evidence because I think that everyone happiness, peace. Oh, this is great. So what's some evidence that supports the freedom that you're seeing? Uh, 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 broken chains. Exactly. We're seeing that uh, breaking away uh, happiness, hope. All right. Chains breaking. This is great. This is this is a very uh, sharp crowd that we have. Here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love All right, it. So let's let's move to, to evidence. So breaking free, uh, freedom, uh, hope. So let's get to evidence. Uh, what sort of evidence supports these larger thematic uh, topics that you're seeing here, right? So a word wall, chains, black and white. I saw uh, the girl in color. That was the decision, uh, you know, uh, of, of the artist, right? So we're getting to explain now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, if we can get to explain. So the artist, the decisions the artist is making, you know, the, the girl in color, background black and white, you're seeing words of peace, fairness in the background here, um, the shackles falling apart, uh, the clouds falling apart, right? So we're seeing evidence of that uh, and, and uh, ex explaining the artist's decisions. Now, you know, to Sherry's favorite part in all of us, right? What do we know looking at this piece? What do we know? Um, you know, the we know that- we we this, know, this read, right? Yes. Isn't that mind blowing, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Third grade. We know that this was created by Aaron. Um, um, what do we want to know now looking at this piece? You know, one of the things I, I would want to know is uh, what's next for uh, Aaron? Uh, it, or if, in fact, it, is this Aaron uh, in this piece? Um, so, you know, I would love to know that who influenced her? That's great, Nancy, exactly. Who influenced her? Uh, and what is her experience? Uh, and, and is this her interpretation of hope and, uh, and freedom and future, right? Uh, where is she going? Yes, that's such a great uh, question. So again, you know, a very timely piece here. Uh, we did this in a very short amount of time, but again, you can engage, we wanna encourage you to engage your students and looking at and decoding these works of art because it moves beyond the, the technical observation of this piece. This is beautifully done as we all can see, but there's so much to digest here. And uh, that's the beauty of our SEEK protocol, right? We're investigating, we're searching for answers here. Uh, so thank James, you for- James, talk yes, a bit ahead, about how this can be a writing springboard and how you've seen teachers and students use this uh, to inspire writing. Yes. So, um, you know, and looking at this piece, we started with, you know, what do you see? And most of you said freedom, hope, uh, uh, you know, prosperity, right, a bright future. So using that as a springboard, we often encourage uh, educators to say, all right, so take freedom, for example, uh, as a big topic. All right. So now uh, who would you write to about freedom? Right. So think about an audience that you could write to about freedom. Uh, and then after you think about your audience, uh, what sort of uh, voice would you use in writing to this audience, right? So if you're writing to, uh, uh, you know, third graders uh, about freedom of, of voice, right, breaking the chains off. So maybe it's, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're transitioning uh, uh, from one grade to the next and you're becoming free in your own ideas and voice and thoughts. Uh, so write about that. Uh, and then you move to genre, what, what would you write this in? Will this be a Twitter post? Uh, will this be a journal? So this is a great way, we call it our uh, intentional writing framework, uh, where you can phase through using art as a springboard to write to any audience inspired by that piece. So you know, again, another opportunity to infuse writing uh, uh, and, and pairing that with art. Absolutely. Reading and writing obviously go together like peanut butter and jelly, right? Reading and yes. writing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, this is great. And, you know, we talked earlier because I loved what I saw through the Seek, you know, tool and, and how we did it. And these are two great pieces of artwork. And I remember talking to you and talking, saying, okay, so this was, uh, it felt um, like a lesson plan. It felt planned, but you brought to my attention that this could be used anytime, anywhere, yeah. Walking uh, around you know, a neighborhood, exactly. right? Right. Share this with families, and they can be using Seek um, on a nature walk. 
uh, think about this, I mean, really powerful in a museum where you're looking at historical documents and, and images. Um, think about opening, we, we uh, earlier someone said she was a science teacher, I think it was Barbara. Think about opening up a science book and looking at science sketches and using Seek to get more insights and science facts. Uh, anyway, picture books are just delicious to use with Seek. In fact, <laughs> a lot of librarians use Seek to first read the pictures and, and make some hypothesis and then read the text and see if your if your analysis was accurate. So honestly, I feel like over time, this just becomes a part of what you do exactly. in your classroom, you know, if you're, you know, a parent or, you know, engaged with family work, this is just something that can happen all the time. Every, you know, every subject area, every grade level, which I found Fascinating. And one of the ways we like to That's encourage neat. it to be really conversational, right, like it could be a planned lesson, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be formal, is we'd like to step away and, and sort of stop that awkward conversation where somebody would say to a young artist, what is it? right? Like, like, it doesn't have to be in it. That's not the point. So th these questions, these four pillars of SEEK guide the conversation in a way that honors the young artist. Because yeah. you're using innovation, evidence, inference, and inquiry. And, you know, you don't jump to that sort of awkward moment of the kid saying, well, it's not really a horse. Why did you, you think it was? If I had done that, this could be a whole other session, but then it ties to their confidence, exactly. right? Like every piece of art has to feel good to them and you want them to be proud of whatever that may be. Um, and so it's like putting it a quarter in the jar at my house. I'm really trying to be mindful around, don't ask, you know, what is it? Don't ask. It's more about, tell me about the exactly. picture you're giving me. And it's, it's amazing how you just use different words. And you and get a story out of the child mm -hmm. or the person I'm mm -hmm. um, whatever we're all practicing it now you know like, you know mom's doing it dad's doing it so I can't imagine how powerful this could be in the classroom and so moving forward uh we are able to share with you um project plans right you're giving um two project plans to the audience today and so Melissa has put those links in the chat so make sure you link um the Crayola link because that will give you access um both projects are um available for k-12 correct? Like yes. applicable to pre-k to, to, to college, college, everybody, everybody, anybody, <laughs> me, everybody. Yes. Uh, one yeah, of them is so outside my window, which emphasizes what we just said, observation. And the other is right now, very much what we talked about Alicia's work, writing stories, capturing the news of this most unusual year. Yeah. So, but then you. also in that link, it's the information about our upcoming webinar. You want to tell them, Jennifer, oh, about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. going to get to that. We're going to get okay. to that. I just want to say um, real quick, um, you know, we talked and tied all of this together. So before we share some of the other cool stuff that's happening with Crayola, I want to make sure that we leave with a takeaway or two. You know, you, know, you shared um, two pieces of student art, which I couldn't believe how powerful they were for the age of of the of incredible. I loved that you walked us through and modeled Seek, you know, so you could kind of see how it works in every way. And, you know, last, just sharing some of the resources that you have. I mean, it's just nice because we are getting bombarded <laughs> with different resources all the time, but it's just really nice to have a trusted, vetted, you know, two lessons to get started with to test the waters and try them yourself. So we appreciate that. So what would you say to your audience today as, as a takeaway? Two very simple messages. Help your students make thinking visible. And a way to do that is to use seek. I love it. I love it. That's easy. We can end like that on a Friday. Um, love it. Love it. And so Without, you know, I want to make sure we get to your webinar too, because you had mentioned, you know, you bring up the author of The Dot. He is right? joining us in our me. next Crayola webinar. It's a free webinar. Oh. We are so excited that we will be using Seek with Peter Reynolds. And you, you, can you imagine anything more wonderful than uh, being able, you know, when you have those questions, inquiry, what do you know? What do you ask Peter? Ask him what the inspiration for that sketch was. And he will be with us to be able to answer your C questions, particularly those, what do you want to know? Well, we appreciate the invite. Uh, Melissa has put the link in the chat. This is a free webinar. 
Um, you get to hang out with Peter Reynolds, um, author of The Dot. And going back to what is it? It's a dot. But doesn't Peter open us up to the many things a dot can become? And, you know, so just really, um, really good stuff. So, Sherry, James, we thank you so much for your time today, um, your expertise, your resources. This was really helpful. I'm just glancing at the chat throughout the afternoon or whatever. It sounds like everyone has a takeaway. They were excited. They were um, really um, happy to hang out with all of you. So if you want to learn more, uh, make sure that you download the recording. It'll be posted on our Common Sense Education YouTube channel, along with all of the resources we shared today. Um, again, thank you, Sherry and James. Have a great day, everybody. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you.